Uh, initially, um, it was something I was living in America at the time, and it was something initially that my American agents had submitted me for, and I was unavailable um, at the time that it was shooting, and so I sort of was bummed and kind of forgot about it. And um, and then um, I that movie fell through, and I happened to be in England, and my English agents had also submitted me for it and said, oh, uh, you know, you're now available, you should go in. And I met with Leon Vitali, who I don't I think you've spoken to already. Um yes. and Leon at the time was casting the movie for um for Stanley. He was meeting um all of the people in England, um, as I understand it. And I um I met with Leon and I read some scene I uh, read a scene and then um I was a little bit hesitant because there was some nudity in it. Um obviously this was not for the role that I initially ended up doing, it was something different. Mm-hmm. And I thought, Oh, I don't know, I'm on the fence and I was young at the time and I was very sort of body conscious and I, I sort of said, Oh, don't think I can do it and thought I must be mad. I can't believe I'm turning this down but I just felt very uncomfortable. And so I, you know, sort of kind of again bummed, thought, uh oh, I should let this go. And then a few days later, my agents, English agents called me and said, um, Stanley wants to have a conversation with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> so uh, I was at my, gra- it's very funny actually, because I was at my grandfather's house. I was staying with him, because I was based in, I was still based in the US at that time, and I was at my grandfather's house, I was staying with him, and and Stanley called, and, and my grandfather was like, oh, there's a man called Stanley on the phone. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, granddad, that's Stanley Kubrick. Massive director. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's huge. So I had the most sort of fascinating conversation. I'm sure many of your guests have told you how utterly charming and engaging and fascinating he is. And we spent Mm -hmm. quite a long time on the phone discussing a lot of other things. He was asking me about myself and my career and... And um, we talked about all kinds of things, actually. We talked about movies that we enjoyed, and it was just really great. And he finally sort of convinced me, um, you know, to sort of think about the part. And I was like, okay, I, I think I can do this. And then <laughs> he ended up giving it to somebody else. And again, crushed, I left, and I went back <laughs> to England. <laughs> and I was like, oh, God. Um, and a, a few weeks, I think it was quite... a quite some time after that but a few weeks after that I was back in America and my English agent called and said look he's offering you another part it's no nudity I said I will sweep the floor whatever it is I'll do it <laughs> and uh, and so I flew to England that's how I ended up in the movie <laughs> wow uh, so yeah. obviously uh, obviously you'd you'd been acting for a while prior to that but uh, so true, you yeah. had you had a you had an, a definite idea of the kind of mythic status of a Kubrick among sure. uh, movie fans, uh, what kind of role did his films play in your life? What, what was your knowledge of, of his work? What did you particularly like? Up until that time, before I got the film, I would have to say it was mainly Doctor Strange Love and um, 2001. Um, mm-hmm. Those were the films that I remembered. And a lot of people, when they would talk about Star Wars and they would talk about some of the more kind of mainstream um, sci-fi movies would always talk about well, it wasn't it wasn't 2001, and oh, they stole that from 2001, or blah blah blah. blah right. About the science fiction genre, and so um, when and uh, my manager at the time was a huge Kubrick fan, and, and so he said, "You've got to watch this guy's stuff." And and I think it was the perfect time because there was a lot. I don't think when I was in my teens that I would have understood. Um, mm-hmm. And I think I was 24 when I made the film, um, and I watched most of his films um i still sort of have a slight aversion to real violence so i couldn't face clockwork orange because i'd mm-hmm. heard about it and now i'm it might be nothing now because of you know the way that uh, um you know the taste has changed in terms of movies and what's acceptable or not but his his style like the shining i did see and that he is so amazing at exuding every last drop of tension um Mm. from, you know, uh, a situation. I just was terrified. So I, I didn't see Clockwork Orange, but I saw The Killing, which I thought was amazing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw Barry Lyndon, and I saw... Um, I didn't see Full Metal Jacket, but I, I, I went... You know, I saw Spartacus, which I know he wasn't a huge fan of because of the experience with Kurt Douglas. But right. I just tried to see all of them, <laughs> just in case he asked me. <laughs> right, you, the, you you crammed like to, to prepare for the... Uh, I crammed, yeah. But yeah. as I say, up until that point, he was exactly as you said. He was this mythic. He was this mythic um, 
person, he was a mythic filmmaker that's sort of breaking ground and sort of creating new genres. And it was very funny, I'll tell you a funny story. Um, after I'd done the film, um, I was fortunate enough to work, a very small role, I was filling in for someone, someone dropped out very very last minute on Armistad, a role in Armistad, which I actually don't mm. think is, is in the film anymore. And when I got, and it was, I'd just gotten back to America from doing Eyes Wide Shut, and um, I was on the set for like 20 minutes max, and all Spielberg wanted to talk about was Stanley. He's like, oh, you just worked on Eyes Wide Shut? I was like, yeah, he's like, yeah, Stanley's a friend of mine. Yeah, he's a really good friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, he's great. We talk all the time. I was like, oh my God, Steven Spielberg is like literally going, yeah, I know him too. Yeah. So he's a really good friend of mine. So yeah, how was it? You know, it's like completely <laughs> in awe of the fact that he gets to be friends with Stanley. It was yeah. just, it was charming. It was very, it was a whole, it was amazing. Anyway, go ahead. So yeah, I, I, I would have, I would have freaked out too. But uh, yeah, right. But, yeah, any exactly. level, it doesn't matter who you are at any stage of your career. I guess he is the sort of, he would be the auteur. He is the auteur of American cinema. Mm. Mm-hmm. So you must have had a perception or vision of what to expect from him how did how did he surprise you when you finally did meet with him utter warmth mm. and a, a real warmth and welcoming and and very funny i think that was the thing that was most surprising is that uh you know i'm sure people have talked about tom's ability to make you feel so at home and he was very he was very tired i know it was a long shoot and i think that was quite a ways into the shoot, um, the scene, mm-hmm. scene that we shot, and so he was tired. And I could see, I could see the strain in him, but he was really thrilled to be there. He was so excited to be working with Stanley, and they were both so welcoming. And we laughed a lot. That was the most surprising thing. It was just we giggled and we laughed all the time. We just, it was very, yeah, it was a very, much more relaxed situation than I thought it was going to be. And I've heard other people have different experiences. Mine was pretty amazing. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. And how how, how long did the the duration of that uh, shoot take for you, for that scene? That one scene took a couple of days to shoot. The first day, we didn't we didn't shoot at all. We just rehearsed. We just um, We just talked. We just got on the set, and we just talked, and we just ran it through. And it was a very short scene initially and it became the scene that it was by us working it out um mm. it ended up being i think it ended up going from like a page scene to a five page scene um and stanley was very conscious about asking tom and myself what we would do in the situation at every step he would be like well what would you do he was he was very he was interested in getting it as real as possible but making it interesting he was trying to find that which i think is why he does so many takes he's looking for something very natural and organic um but that still has a sort of heightened level of something that just you know a little bit takes it out of the ordinary and i don't know it's very hard to sort of capture that magic on screen Mm -hmm. Um, and i hear people talk about excuse me i hear people talk about obviously a lot of people that didn't work with him say he was controlling and, and and but I hear the exact opposite from the actors that worked with him because a controlling director would come on set and he'd know exactly what he wanted and he would expect you to give him exactly what he wanted. But from what I understand, like you're saying, he just let the scene build on its own. He wanted to be surprised. He wanted to find it at, at, on the day. Yeah, I've worked with controlling directors, and I wouldn't say that about him. And he might he might be that way with um, collaborators that he's working with. But with the actors, um, I mean, like crew people and, and things like that, but I certainly didn't experience that either. Um, I I just, yeah, I felt, ve- I felt it was the most collaborative experience I've had, actually. Um, I haven't done a lot of theater, and I know that's a lot more coll- collaborative than TV and film. And it, it was, it was, I really felt valued. I really felt that my opinion was valued. And I, I did get the sense that Kubrick has the last word, and he should. <laughs> He's earned yeah. the right to have the last word on something. Um, yeah. But I didn't. I never felt like my opinion was discounted, ever. Right. Yeah, it was a really, a truly amazing experience. And it shows. I mean, it's just one scene, but it's still my best work. I I love the scene. I, 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 it's oh, one of my. You. It's actually one of my favorite scenes in the film. Um, yeah. What made his uh, set unique? You've you've worked with a lot of filmmakers on a lot of film sets. What was unique mm-hmm. about his? No one was around. 
It was mm. like being on a. It was like being on a stage. There in a, a rehearsal, there was no one there. There was a cameraman. We were mic'd, and everybody was off stage. The DP came in and looked at the lights to make sure it was good, and left. There was no one around. It was me and Stanley and Tom and um, the cameraman. It was, uh, you know, it was, there was literally, if I, I, it felt, I mean, maybe there were, maybe the focus puller was there, but it, it felt like it was just myself and Tom and Stanley in the room. He was not watching on the monitor. He was there. He was watching it as it was happening. Um, and so it felt very um, intimate, very mm. intimate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can feel that. Yeah. You can feel that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it did feel that way. And I don't know if that was, you know, I mean, I just sensed with, I mean, his intelligence, the sparkle, like he had such a sharp, his eyes were always so mesmerizing to me. They were so sharp and he had this big bushy beard. <laughs> and sort of, you, you couldn't see half of his face because he was completely covered. And he just, but his eyes were this, this black kind of marble shining beads of light. It was so, it was just, you could tell the intelligence that was radiating out of uh, radiating out of them. And he had such a, a warmth. It was. It was. It's hard not to <laughs> want to like hug Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. <laughs> but you think, yeah. oh no, yeah. that's like hugging the king. That'd be so wrong. That'd be like, <laughs> be very awkward. Oh, qu- oh, the queen. You know, I'll just go up and hug you. And you can imagine her going, um, no, no, <laughs> no, right. don't do that. <laughs> Someone's gonna arrest me at any moment because <laughs> uh, I want to get him in a bear hug because he just, yeah, he exuded a certain, yeah, warmth. I don't know, but. um <laughs> Did you know how your how your scene played in the whole? I mean, did you get to read the entire piece or just your? No, scene? I did not. No, I, the other the other part that I auditioned for also, I, I never. I knew what the movie was based on, and I I, 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 I you know I freely admit that I did not read it. I didn't read Tram Novel, and mm. um, I think that's the correct pronunciation. And so I did not know, um, mm. and I. Um, I knew a little bit about the, the the ninth journey from what they how they were discussing it, and he told me about the previous situation. He said, "You know, your your roommate um, is someone that uh, Bill, you know, Tom's character has met um, uh, earlier on, and you have to deliver, you know, some bad bad news about her." Um, so, but he's very he he was very private. He was ultra secretive about it, and mm-hmm. I don't know that anybody. I think Tom and Nicole was allowed the whole script for enough time that they had to read it and then that was it. It was taken away from them until they said yes. Um so I think that um I definitely felt that sense of, of absolute privacy. I don't remember signing a confidentiality agreement. But uh but yeah I definitely didn't know a lot about the rest of the movie. And that that expanded too into his discussions about the film. He was very he, he never discussed meaning uh, with anyone, including the actors, or so, so basically, you you were discovering things yourself, and and he would say he would say yes, try that. Yeah, he would. He would say yeah, try that. That sounds interesting. Let's see what that looks like. Oh yeah, that's great. Let's write that down, and then we'd have someone shoot off some 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 new sides, and you know, then we'd go again. And oh well, okay. So then, what about this? Are you feeling here at this moment that you would want to do this? And then we'd kind of move. You know, we try we try a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you never, I never felt like I knew what the scene meant to Bill's character. I mean, I can, knew in the moment that it was traumatizing, but I didn't know if he'd had sex with that, with my roommate. I didn't know that mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't know where it would lead him after that. And for myself, you know, for my character, you know, I didn't. I didn't really know. Like, does this make her feel? Give you know, give her pause about her. Um, you know what she. You know, being a prostitute. And at the time, I wasn't hundred percent sure that she was a prostitute. It was a decision that I sort of made myself because hmm. a roommate was. I said, well, does this shake me up, or will I? Would I continue to do it? And yeah, it was interesting sitting in such a character for such a long. Uh, you know, over such a long period of time for such a short scene. <laughs> yeah. 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 You really now, did feel like you'd explored it and exhausted it. I mean, he he mm. in his life he exhausted every possibility. I mean, you you I mean, just look at his, all the work he did on his film and in the preparation. I mean, that's why it took so long to put them together. He was exhausting every mm. single avenue he could. Mm. And yet, um, isn't it fascinating that on the day though he was still able to be open to Yes. Yes. to seeing where it would take him. Yeah. Yeah. That that is fascinating to me too. Uh 
do you have a fondest memory of him from that experience? Um I would say just over I would just say the overall experience like again the warmth the the sort of he would say he you know I just felt a genuine he genuinely liked me I sensed that and it was really nice because you know I just I did feel like an equal. I say that's my fondest memory is his ability to make me feel that way. And I know that other you know like I know the Shelley Duvall experience was rough and and he didn't they didn't have a good relationship and and he he did talk about how difficult it was. Um, so I know that you know he didn't get on with everyone. Um, and I do feel bad for some some of the actors on some of the other movies. I know I felt like he he put them through the ringer a little bit. And the most uh, most Tom and I ever did was thirteen takes. Um, mm. But most of it were were was like five or six takes. We didn't we didn't do like thirteen takes every single of every single setup. Um and uh we, we had a Christmas break that kind of broke up the the whole thing when Tom and Nicole came back to America for Christmas and that sort of delay like it it was five I was in England for five weeks making the film, but I was only on the set I think three or four days, maybe. Mm-hmm. But still <laughs> it's like three or four days. <laughs> I mean now, you you no one else but Stanley could do that. Who could take five mm. days to shoot a scene? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just and remember. La- I mean, I remember the jokes. They were we, jo- we told each other jokes. I remember that. I remember his sense of humor was really fun. He's really funny. Um, yeah, that's my best memory is is the warmth. And and you asked him questions about his films, and he he talked to you about. Oh, his, he loved to talk work? about it. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. He loved to talk about it. I said, you know, I think my favorite film was The Killing, and he he said, oh, well, that's one of my favorites too. And he said, what'd you like about it? And then we talked about that, and. Um, yeah, no, he de- he definitely talked about other experiences. He was he was as open and and when we were talking on the phone initially when he called me at my grandfather's, um he felt it felt very I like I could ask him anything. And I, he might not have told me, but I felt like I could ask him at least. Mm. You know. So when you see the film uh for the first time in completed form, uh what were your impressions of the film and, and your scene in in particular? I thought, oh my God, this is too big for me. <laughs> Can't get my head around it. And I, it, and I think a lot of people feel this way: is that they're sort of just, um, they're just because Stanley made films very rarely, and and you'd watch a lot of foreign films feeling kind of like, oh, nothing's explained, and you're so used to an American cinema having everything explained. Mm-hmm. And his is, you know, his movies. It did feel like a dream. Um, so I felt more than I understood when at the first viewing. Yeah. And I remember the scene. The, the, I remember seeing it at the premiere. Um, I remember seeing the scene I did with Tom, and I just remember the crackle when he opened the door, and I was like, it was. I was out of body experience, and I just thought, oh my god, it's. It just felt electric, like watching it on screen. I've never felt that way about any of my performances, really. I was just like, oh, my God, this is... I knew at the time that it was good work, and I don't Mm -hmm. normally do that. I don't normally feel that way. I normally feel that everything's rubbish. (laughs) That's just the English Mm self-deprecating thing, you know. You just always want to complain. And I just really, like, wow. I I thought, wow, that's what a phenomenal director does for you. Yeah. Um, I was so proud. (laughs) And then as I've seen the movie subsequently... It's made a little bit more sense, but that might be as I'm getting older and I'm. Doesn't it do that because me. because yeah. I've rewatched Kubrick films and, and they're they deepen in meaning for me the older I get. They're almost like new experiences. That you're constantly discovering new things in these films. Don't you think that has to do with? I want it must have to do with the fact that he's exploring every avenue before he starts writing. Mm-hmm. Like the, the fact that he has such attention to detail and he's exploring the subject. In so many different ways. I mean, you know, he said he has such a fascination for life. He had so much interest yeah. um, in life, and 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 I, I know. So he 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 would get subtext. I mean, he would get levels of subtext into the movie. And maybe we're all just being. I mean, maybe he's looking down at us, going, "You dolts, like <laughs> whatever." Like I never, <laughs> I never intended any of that stuff. And it's all you just, you know. It's all coming out of your own imagination, your own subconscious. But I don't know. I, I I'd like to think that he was really trying to delve, uh, certainly with eyes wide shut, as as deep into the subconscious as he could into the human emotion and human relationships and and the way that you know 
these things unfold sometimes without us realizing it's like you find yourself going how did i get here yeah. um yeah well, let me tell yeah you. Uh, Eyes Wide Shut is actually my favorite Kubrick film. Uh, I mean, it's the one really? that moves me the most. I- I'm very moved by Eyes Wide Shut. Um, oh. and, and and it was like that from the start. Uh, and I sense that, just like all Kubrick films, people are uh, rediscovering Eyes Wide Shut and re-exploring it uh, mm-hmm. in, in recent years and in, in a new way. But mm-hmm. I, don't think, I don't think anything is um, uh, coincidental. In, in yeah. a Kubrick film, I, I think it's all thought out. I mean, I've heard so many uh, interpretations. The two films that I've heard the most varied interpretations of are *The Shining* and *Eyes Wide Shut*, and and they've just been fascinating discussions. Mm-hmm. And, and it's all in there. I mean, I, I see why people would look at *The Shining* and say that it's about the the genocide of the American Indian. I mean, that seems like a ludicrous claim <laughs> when you hear it. But you watch The Shining, and, and there are dozens upon dozens of examples that illustrate that. And maybe he yeah. was looking after, looking for that. Who knows? But his movies are so mysterious. that I, I love that about them. Yeah, me too. I love that you can make your own interpretation. And honestly, I will say that it's the only movie that anybody wants to talk about. Whenever I go into a meeting, <laughs> it's the only thing anybody wants to talk about is Stanley in the movie. And I'm happy to do it because, you know, I re- at the time I remember getting on a plane and going back to America after I finished the film. And I was like, you know what, Faye, you're 25. And if that's the, like, if you've reached the zenith at that point, and if, you know, if, if, if everything you do after that feels slightly anticlimactic, that's okay because you've worked with the most sort of at least intriguing and um, innovative director um, of American cinema and one could argue, you know, of world cinema. I mean, he's up there. And so, you know, I sort of think, I thought, you know, I was just about to swear then. (laughs) Thank God I held my back. You can cut that out. But I just thought, um, I can't believe. But that's what I was saying to myself on the plane was like, holy, how did I get here? How did this happen to me? Mm. Um, because for an actor, um, that's your ultimate goal in film is to work with someone of that caliber. Um, yeah. 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 So, so it, what, it, it's, I, I will, I will ask you about uh, uh, something else outside of Eyes Wide Shut. What, what are sure. you working on now? <laughs> uh, well, I just, uh, I just finished doing, um, I've been doing some, a lot of television this year. I just finished doing, um, an episode of Lie to Me, that show with Tim Roth, which is a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and that airs, I think, January 10th. I, I literally just finished that a few weeks ago. Um, okay. And uh, I write now, so I'm working on a book, which could be rubbish, but it's just really enjoyable. It's a really enjoyable experience. Is it fiction? Um, and a Christmas, what? It is fiction, yeah. It is fiction. Um, and uh, and then I, I worked on A Christmas Carol with Robert Zemeckis last year. It was another massive sort of yes. high point in my career was working with Jim Carrey and doing the motion capture and I just got released on DVD and again something else I thought wow what an amazing thing to be a part of and and I'm such a huge Christmas fan I mean like it's ridiculous I mean if I could if my <laughs> husband would let me I would literally have the Christmas tree up in July oh yeah <laughs> it's only you know the fact that I don't want to be called a crazy woman that I keep it I keep it down well. uh yeah, and Eyes Wide Shut takes place during Christmas time, so that was that was perfect yes, it too. Does. Right, how amazing right. was that? That was filmed in Pinewood. How how incredible that that movie looks like New York. You just don't. Mm-hmm. And it's great that it, it helps that it's a dream like experience because yes. you know you yes. don't you lose some of the you know it, it feels very sort of isolated. But I think they did an amazing job. Of, I think so um, too. Of shooting you know England for New York, it was it's amazing that he shot. From like the sixties on, he shot all his films in England. Vietnam. I, didn't know that until, I mean, he he you know. recreates Vietnam in England. You know, <laughs> it's yeah, on the London Docklands. Of, yeah, which, amazing. if you went there, you would say, yeah, okay, this makes sense. <laughs> 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 um, now it's all built up, but at the time he made that Full Metal Jacket, it was it was like that. It was pretty rough, mm. but it's still mm. incredible. Yeah, like you think about palm trees and everything that um, in your mind that you associate that is synonymous with Vietnam is not there. But yeah. um yeah, yeah, amazing. Well, and he worked with the me, same people, he was very loyal. 
Yeah, that's what I understand. I've I've spoken to quite a few of his collaborators, and they say, yes, it's the most challenging experience we've ever had, but we did our best work with him. That's why we kept going yeah. back to him. No one else challenged us in that way. I know you really do. You really do feel uh, it's so easy to sort of coast. Um, I think as an actor as well, um, it's easy to coast, and and it you can do good work, but to really ha- be around people that make you want to do your absolute best um, because you respect them so much and that when they're doing their absolute best, I think that's true of any business, of any line of work in this world, is that when you meet a craftsman, a true craftsman, which is what I believe that Stanley was, you it rubs off. You get that energy. You sense it. You feel it. And you just, it elevates your game, just like playing tennis with better tennis players, anything you just want to be better. You want to, you know, you want to do well for them. You don't want to let them down because they're on a quest. If you think of it in a medieval way, he's on a quest, and you know, you want to help him reach the end of the journey. 